I hope we're going to play. And my teacher said, uh, he put me on trumpet. And uh, he said that if you play music, that's the universal language. And I thought to myself, I'm eight or nine years old. What does universal language mean? But uh, I know now that wherever you go, that is the universal language. That's pretty neat. Um, and we, in high school, we had our test to see what we would turn out to be, and my test came back 99% musician and 99% clergyman. <laughs> Played my first job when I was 11 years old. I want to thank my dad and Mark Nissel helped me. Here we are 48 years later. All the places, faces, and friends from all over the world. We played the Minneapolis International Airport, and there's around 48,000 people there. And they would come in, the Japanese, and the Koreans, and the Americans, and all that, and dance, and listen, and buy CDs, and they couldn't even speak English. Codeine, 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 he played codeine, you know. That would have been one for Chuck. <laughs> what do you call that? You know, I said, Constantina, 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 you know. So, you know, but it's just amazing how that, uh, there the music went to different countries without even knowing it, you know. Taught Constantine at Brown's Music Store after Elmer Scheid retired. Yeah, in the teaching sense. Our band has played in France and Missouri, which was nice. Round Top, Texas, Las Vegas, Laughlin, Arizona for the past 21 years. Franklin Muth, Deadwood, South Dakota, Oklahoma, Upper Peninsula, Quad Cities. Sometimes we had to play nine hours a day. So if you don't know your way around after that, you know, something's wrong. But that, you know, we've got a guy pretty familiar with the Constina. Um, then I got some things written down about the vans and getting hauled in and stuff like that when things would go wrong. <laughs> That's where the buck should come in, you know. All of a sudden you're sitting there on a tow truck <laughs> going down the interstate 70 miles an hour looking at that rope holding out there. You know? so, um, yeah, the stress of it all. But I love it on stage getting there uh, and getting home and the setting up and stuff and tear it down starting to show its wear. Uh, once you're on stage and see all the people out there having a good time, that's what it's all about. I want to thank dear Lord for uh, giving me the talent. My mom and dad, my wife Anne, putting up with me for the past 30 years. She does our radio programs now and I can't make up phone calls and notes. Daughters Ashley, Alyssa, Alyssa went on to play Constina. AJ, my little grandson, uh, played his first notes on the Constina at six months old. <laughs> it broke on me the other day, so I had to take it apart. And I thought, he's got nice little fingers. I'll put them on there and push that up. And now, boy, his eyes just lit up. You know? <laughs> so that was pretty neat. Um, the band, Red, uh, Gary, has been with me on and off for 40 years. So Red is his wife, she's been with me for 10 years. Tom Golden on the drums for six years. <coughs> Makes the whole band really to make it a good success. I want to thank the ballrooms for booking us uh, over the past years and giving us the award in 04, 06, 08, and 2010. Shirley Larson for uh, keeping us in nice looking shirts and the names on the back. And Paul and Judy Warmka for taking our equipment down to Las Vegas all the time. Lee Royal and Hedinger and Larry and Mary Delaware and after helping with all the equipment during up and sitting down. I want to thank Jerry Menard for his wonderful recordings. He's done all 18 of them for us at JBM here and he does a super job. Also Steve Moran, Mike Molden and the other side men that would fill in when the regulars could make it. And the fan club that's here to share today in this great day. And the ones that couldn't make it. Uh, we've got them here from South Dakota that came up and from Iowa and all over just to be, be here today. And I really appreciate that. I want to thank Lo Lloyd uh, Kuhner and Cleet Goldberg for nominating me. And especially the World Concertina Congress for inducting me into the Hall of Fame. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.
dance on the right side, all you want to dance. Well, I can play that right side, he goes already. And I said, I don't want to hear your right side. You know? <laughs> anyway, we went back and forth, and uh, he practiced, and they gave him his lessons and uh, stuff like that. I mean, he did really good. He plays a lot. Two, three times a day, sometimes in the nursing homes, and uh, now he's got a driver license, so watch out. <laughs> Leon, uh, whoa, somebody turned up the volume. Okay, some people maybe couldn't hear. That's okay. Um, tell us about the Megastorm Landler. I also um, had a snow, rem snow removal company for 22 years. So you get home from the dance shop, then you'd hop into jeeps and the tractors and loaders and go move snow. And uh, then came that October Halloween storm when we got 29 inches of snow and we went three days in a row without sleep. So then I cleaned my place last. So I got up there and I just went and grabbed the con scene. I thought I got to get away from all this stuff and I started playing. And I was kind of sick of playing the same month, so I thought, you know. Here's a melody, you know, and that was coming, and that was coming, and I thought, that's pretty good, you know, I better write, better claim the tape recorder, or I'm not going to remember this tomorrow. And so I went and got the tape recorder and listened to it after that, and then I played it for my dad. I said, you think that's got any possibilities, and they thought it did, so that's how the Megastorm Landler came about, 1992. And uh, what recording is that on? Any idea? Yeah. Volume 7. So if you want to hear a, an original selection written by Leon right after the big Halloween storm, it's called the Megastorm Landler. Let's give him a big round of applause. You step up right there and get your